So Chris, what do we got here? Well, we're at uh, we're one of the viewing platforms here at the Lower Hylobos Marsh, and we are going to go off trail and through the wilderness of alder trees to find uh, one of the uh, off-channel marsh habitats that was built with this project. Let's go. All right, come on. Oh, did we forget to bring our machete? Or? <laughs> yeah. I thought uh, I thought KPO few reporters uh, you know were issued machetes on on projects like this. Normally we are. Now was this all stuff that was planted as a part of the restoration? Um, most or has some of this grown up on its own? Naturally? Yeah, it's a it's a good mix. Uh, we planted over thirty four thousand trees and plants here, and about two years into the uh, planting project, we had an explosion of of alders, we call them volunteers. They just, uh, you know, they were, the seeds were there in the soil, latent, and after we exposed it, uh, exposed the seeds in the uh, building of the restoration project, they just went to town. And so now this is a heavily, uh, heavily alder-based community right now. But that's, that's a good thing, that's... Yeah, what's the, what's the environmental function of that in the uh, in this little ecosystem here. Well, they're what, they're what we call uh, pioneer tree species, and they they come in. Um, they're fast growing, so they provide a they provide a, a shade canopy uh, fairly quickly, um, which helps keep invasive species down. And they fix nitrogen for this in the soil, which uh, is important for other successional tree species that will follow the the alders and help. You know, help build a uh, a more of a, a native uh, northwest uh, forest ecosystem here. So you're seeing now the trees right. give way to our wetland sedges and rushes uh, that we planted, and they um, they're doing extremely well. Uh, they love the pond that's been created here. Uh, this is what's known as an estuarine marsh wetland. Hylobos Creek uh, enters over in that direction, provides water flow uh, that keeps, keeps water in this wetland uh, constantly, but it's tidally influenced. So uh, uh, as the tide rises, uh, so does the water level here. And this provides, uh, provides off-channel habitat for uh, salmon and other fish and uh, a lot of bird species. And if you take a deep breath, you can smell uh, you can smell Puget Sound. Yeah, it does, it does have a distinctly salty sort of a marsh heavy, you know, the, that, that uh, decaying life sort of smell that you find in a place like this. It's, it's a very robust smell, yeah. It's hard to believe, I mean, you, you know, you can hear the planes going over, but it's kind of hard to believe that uh, I-5 is right over there. Um, we've got the Port of Tacoma, just, uh, just a stone's throw in that direction. And yet here you've got all of this, this abundant life that we've helped put back. Now what function does this perform, again, the, the, the pond here? What function does the uh, pond, you talked about it being an off-channel habitat. What, is, what does that mean? How does that work? Well, the um, Hylobos Creek is, is a small stream, but uh, even small streams can be unforgiving for uh, juvenile salmon, um, and particularly uh, one, they can be unforgiving in, in terms of there's a lot of predators out there and not as many places to hide uh, in the main stem. Uh, so the off-channel off -channel habitats like this provide uh, juvenile salmon with places to hide from predators, increases their chances of growing to become adults and returning to, uh, to spawn in Hylobos Creek. Um, these also provide good places to feed their rich environments uh, for juvenile salmon and, and I think as we talked earlier that also means they're a rich environment for birds that like to eat juvenile salmon so there's still a predator prey uh, cycle going on here. Um, and also uh, Hylobos Creek being an urban stream uh, it experiences high flows during, during times when we have storms and, and th those, those can be very dangerous to juvenile salmon. It can sweep them you know, out, of, out of the creek um, long before they want to leave the creek. So an off-channel place like this is a place for them to hide during storms and to get out of, you know, get out of, the, uh, get out of flood situations and, and remain safe. 
Now you came here a while back with some officials and found uh, the water was uh, quite higher than you would expected. Uh, what happened there? Yeah, we had uh, we had some beavers uh, move in. They're, they're you know I've I've lived in the Hylobos uh, Creek watershed my entire life, um, and I it's first beavers I know of uh, 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 you know making a home in Hylobos Creek. Um, so I would say they're the first beavers in the last four decades. Um, it appears that they probably moved in from the Puyallup River watershed, which has experienced an explosion in beaver populations. Uh, they built several dams here, uh, which increased the water level um, probably, I would say it was up to about here, where I'm standing right now. Um, the, the beavers have since moved on and the, the dams you know, no longer retaining water, so the water's gone back to its normal level. Um, I, I, I suspect those beavers were probably young beavers. Um, they didn't quite know what they were doing. The dams were not, they looked like dams I would build. They were not professional <laughs> dams. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that means that we'll have beavers uh, move back in at some point, because they're, they're great, for, uh, great for restoration areas like this.